I'm Vicki Hobb, Education Coordinator for Handy Quilter, and I'm at American Patchwork and Quilting in their Crafts Lab, and I want to talk to you today about borders. Now, we have all different kinds of borders. There are edge-to-edge uh, -edge borders, which means from one edge to the quilt to the other edge of the quilt. There are borders that go with cornerstone. So I want to show you all of this, talk about how to put that border in. So let's talk about this one first. This is a border to border design. These cute little flowers are border to border. And then as we come down here at the bottom of the quilt, you'd put these borders in border to border. And then as I quilted the quilt, I would leave this unquilted and quilt the body of the quilt if this was a large quilt. But would I do a chunk as I quilted and then advance the quilt and a chunk more? Or would I leave it? Turn my quilt. So when I say turn the quilt, pin this to the leader, pin this to the leader, and then work my fullness in. It's an option. You know, large quilts, and if I were doing digitized or computerized quilting, I would. I would turn the quilt so that I could build the area, put my design in. But if I were doing just a freehand quilting, I may just leave the quilt, do the top border, work the body, work as I go down the quilt. So that's one way to do borders. Another type of border is the quilt behind me. This quilt, has a cornerstone. Now, the cornerstone is really defined because the fabric is a different color. And so I put a motif in this, a motif and then piano keys across. So it doesn't have to be the same um, design. It's not at all. Put your cornerstone in there, some fun motif, and then fill your border, fill your border. Now let's go to the next border. This border here, it's a fun border here, but look at the cornerstone. There is no quilting in that, it's left. Now this is small enough that you can actually do that, but I would never leave this unquilted. That's just too much unquilted area. You need to put some fun motif in it. Okay, so we've got a horseshoe in there to kind of match those cowboy boots, and there's that nice border here. We've taken care of that, so let's fill that in. Okay, let's look at some of these borders. Let's turn this and look. It's got a mitered corner. And not always do mitered corners look good. So we want to press that, make sure that works. And, oh, I've got some fullness here. I've really got some fullness there that I need to work out. And I could stretch things, but it doesn't seem like it wants to stretch very well because of everything you know you could do you got to be really careful though how do I get the fullness out of my quilt as I'm quilting because I don't want to stretch it I want it to be pressed properly and there's right in here is going to be some fullness as I'm stitching across and it's going to start causing tucks well, I got a tip I got a water bottle and when I put that water bottle down on the machine or on the the fabric, and as I move my machine across, it actually will start rolling that water bottle. And as it rolls the water bottle, it will start taking fullness out right as I go, so that as I'm stitching this, it will help take that fullness out, and I have both of my hands on my machine, the water bottle continues to move, and it's helping take that fullness out so that when I quilt it and it's finished, it lays flat, there's no tucks in it, and it's beautiful. So don't be afraid to use a little weight on your machine, but don't be afraid of borders. Sometimes we quilt them edge to edge, and sometimes we really define that border and let it shine. 